Whether documenting a journey from A to B, exploring and responding to places, or using historical or personal journeys in order to better understand identity, who we are and where we come from, the concept of journeys highlights the way in which human beings make meaning of and mark their own existence through life. So what do you associate with the word journey? What does it suggest to you? Pause here, Marta, and discuss your, your first initial thoughts. The concept of journeys encompasses physical, emotional, psychological, and spiritual journeys. These are the four sub-focuses that you'll be exploring in your own work. I'll, give, I'll be giving you some more examples of work that demonstrate each of these four sub-focuses in the following videos. But for now, let's just focus on the concept of journey itself. Journey can refer to an actual physical journey, traveling from one place to another, obviously, wandering around a physical urban or landscape location in order to explore it, or even enforced migration, such as the journeys made by slaves or refugees. However, journeys don't always have to involve physical travel. The term journey is often used to describe the journeys we make in life, such as personal experiences that involve an element of self-discovery, or more generally the journey through life, growing up or getting old. The concept lends itself to rites of passage, lived experience, and relationships between inner self and outer environments. Journey might also be used in relation to the formal processes in art making, for example, in the work of artists whose process dictates the end result of the work. Think back here to Hermias Kephliasis. So the concept of journeys is broken down into three sub-focus into three focus areas, sorry. Palimpsest, personal narratives, and collections. In the previous video, we already explored the concept of palimpsest in some depth. Think back to the first work we looked at, Kurt Schwitter's Opened by Customs. How do you think this work represents a journey? Kurt Schwitter's life was marked by travel and exile. In 1937, Schwitter's fled Nazi Germany for his own safety after his art was declared degenerate by the Nazis. This work was created during the short time he lived in Norway which was invaded by Nazi Germany in 1940. After being officially labelled an enemy alien, he spent 17 months moving between various internment camps in Scotland and England before settling in London and later in the Lake District. Clearly, his journey during this time was fraught with political turmoil and some traces from his experience can be seen in this work. Opened by Customs is a complex mesh of overlaid scraps of paper that reflects the nomadic life Schwitters was forced to lead in the late 1930s. There is just enough information, in fact, for the work to reflect the difficult period in the artist's life when he was forced to flee Nazi Germany to the relative safety of Norway. In the bottom left section of the collage is a very white piece of paper. The quality of the paper and the insignia at the top of the page indicates that it is official headed paper. The words German and work are visible within a laurel wreath. Next to this in the left-hand corner is quite a large section of Norwegian text. The word going is visible. Finally, in the centre of the work is another fragment of good quality paper which contains a printed list of German words that all relate to travel such as sleeper car, airline boarding pass, baggage insurance and reservations. By contrast, the remaining elements in the work are flimsy and ephemeral. In the bottom right corner is a photograph. He's standing at an angle to the viewer, looking past us and over his shoulder with a faint smile on his face. Around him are other fainter male figures, giving the impression that the central figure is perhaps a commuter in a rush-hour crowd. Above the photograph is another piece of tissue paper, this time the kind often used to wrap oranges. The Spanish word for delicious is just legible, as is part of the supplier's address in Spain. Schwitters shows us that the fruit is as well-travelled as he is. The other collage elements that signify movement and travel are three custom stamps at the top of the work and a fragment of a faded envelope. The German name for Norway is clearly visible. 
there are thick strokes of oil paint over the Norwegian text in the bottom left corner. These brush strokes vary in colour and seem like accidental gestures, almost as if they are merely attempts to clean the brush. Yet the inclusion of red helps to draw the eye to the bottom left corner on its journey around the collage. The brush strokes, squiggles and crayon lines also serve another purpose. They give the work a human presence amongst the anonymous fragments of urban ephemera. The concept of journey may also take the form of personal narrative, as with Julia Lochtev's film, Said in Passing. A city's subway system is a public space in perpetual motion, a constantly shifting no man's land, inhabited by people on the move. Five video projections form one long image showing different women riding the New York subway. Their voices can be heard on headphones across from each projection each offering personal commentaries that appear to present their real characters to the audience. In fact, Loktev chose the women to play the parts, some actors, some friends and acquaintances of the artist, asking them to respond to a list of intimate questions. It was then left to the women to decide whether to answer the questions truthfully or not. Think about this work in relation to the concept of journey. What is the relationship between the personal narratives of the women with their journey on the subway? Pause here and discuss your response. Her installation mixes reality and fiction and highlights the transitory nature of the urban experience. The work stages the possibility of experiencing other people's identities in a crowded subway environment. The result is an articulation of a fragmented identity that is inconsistent and unreliable, a blurring of self and character, a performance of self as character. By presenting verbal profiles that are inconsistent and semi-fictional, the film suggests that self-revelation is inherently contradictory. Returning to the installation at different moments in its cycle, we find another journey and a completely different set of portraits, echoing the anonymous, fragmented nature of encounters in the metropolis. For me, living in London, the journey of these women on the subway is very familiar. The experience of this kind of journey seems to be a social anomaly. Perhaps it's partly to do with being Australian. I'm used to having a certain amount of personal space, and of course the Gold Coast is quite a spacious place in comparison to somewhere like London or New York. And yet I daily engage in this peculiar situation where I find myself confined to an intensely small space and in very close personal proximity with complete strangers. Sometimes there's eye contact, on occasions there are verbal exchanges, very often physical contact. Information is extrapolated from these limited impressions and entire identities are constructed, projected I suppose from my own psyche. So in this way I have my own personal understanding of the relationship between the women's personal narratives and their journey on the subway. The concept of journey is explored in a different way through the focus of collections, for example, in the work of Swiss-French Swiss artist Corinne Vionnet. We travel, we see a monument, we take a picture. Framing sites of mass tourism in our viewfinders, we create photographic souvenirs that are fundamental to the tourist experience. Using keywords to search for famous monuments, Vionnet gathered a collection of thousands of tourist snapshots for her series Photo Opportunities. Vionnet is a pioneer in the exploration and repurposing of web-based imagery. She began her series in 2005 after observing that most snapshots were either conscious or unconscious renderings of existing imagery of that location. This led her to examine how we select the optimum spot from which to photograph a landmark and how we edit out that which is superfluous to our constructed reality of leisure. Think about this series as it relates to the concept of journey and to the focus, of the focus of collections. How does this series utilize collections to frame the perceived experience of journey? What does journey mean when viewed through the layers of this collection of photographs? 
pause here and discuss what you think. Thousands of these images went into the making of the series Photo Opportunities. Working with multiple images of different monuments, VNA collects and collates around 100 appropriated photographs for each of her layered ethereal compositions. They seem to be filled with ghosts, layer upon layer, of almost invisible histories of the anonymous travellers who captured each frame. The series is a commentary on mass tourism and its relationship to digital culture. Underneath these beautiful ghost visions is a serious concern with how the persistence of repeated photographic compositions affects our cultural and historical awareness. They speak to our obsession with travel and the traveller's need to document each visit to reinforce their presence in a place. Our travel photographs, which would once have been hidden away in the family photo album, are now shared via social networking sites. The personal has become the communal. This series explores the way in which we represent our travels through collecting photographs, in a way almost like collecting trophies. The relationship to place here is explored both in terms of how we present a relationship to place through photographic documentation but also the hidden, implied place from which we take the photograph, that which remains unphotographed. As Susan Sontag aptly put it, excursions are often scripted successions of photographic mediations with the real, disruptions that distance us from any direct engagement with our environment. These products, coined photograph trophies by Sontag, separate our leisurely pleasures from the real everyday experiences of work and life, validating that we have had fun on vacation and we were in exotic locales where the Eiffel Tower, the Statue of Liberty or Niagara Falls exist. What is remarkable about v findings is the consistency in online iterations of the traveller's gaze. It makes you wonder, how do we determine the optimum spot from which to photograph these landmarks? Perhaps we instinctively choose how to photograph known monuments as we're socially conditioned to take pictures we've seen before. Images popularised through film, television, postcards and the internet. So now think about what the word journey means to you. What types of journeys have you experienced in your life? And what influence have these journeys had on you? Pause here and brainstorm the term journey as it relates to the sub-focuses spiritual, emotional, physical and psychological.